What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Power BI tutorial series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at all types of visualizations. Now, when you're working in Power BI, there are a lot of different options to create visualizations, and you may not always be sure which one to use. And so that's what this video is for. I'm going to walk you through a lot of the visualizations that I like and I use a lot, as well as kind of point out some of the ones that I don't like as much so that you get kind of a feel for the ones that I think are really popular and that are used the most. So without further ado, let's jump into Power BI and start taking a look. All right, before we jump into it, there is a link in the description where you can get the data that we're gonna be using for these visualizations if you want to practice them yourself. Before we actually get into it, we do need to combine this. And if you download that Excel and you see this, you'll have to do the same thing. All we have to say is that this product ID is the same as this product ID purchased. And now we are good to go. We'll do one to many, and it's okay if it's one way. So right over here under this visualizations tab, there are lots of different options, and it can be a little bit overwhelming. You don't really know which one to choose. There are some in here that I have almost never used for my job ever. So I'll point those out as we go through, but the main focus is gonna be focusing on the ones that I do use or that I have used and showing you how to actually create that visualization, maybe spice it up just a little bit but we have a lot of them to go through, so let's jump right into it. And the very first one that we're gonna start with, probably the easiest one and the one that you'll recognize the most, is a stacked bar chart. And what we are going to do is go ahead right over here to the product name, and we want this unit sold as well. So we're gonna click product name, and it's gonna go straight into the Y axis for us, and then we're gonna click unit sold, and that will go into the X axis. Automatically, it just kind of intuitively knows but sometimes it will make a mistake and then you can just fix it or flip it. And we do want this, uh, let me make this much larger. We do want this to be a little bit more color coded. That is what this legend is down here. So what we're going to do is drag this product name down to the legend. And now we have each product as its own color. And in previous videos, we have gone through and looked at some of these visual and general options that you have when you're actually creating these visualizations, but we're going to do some of them while we're in here as well. So we're just going to go down here, we're going to choose data labels, and we're going to shrink that. And if you go higher, the higher you go, the less you see. So if you want all of them all the way down to the green, we're going to go right about there and we're going to make it smaller. So now we can go ahead and click anywhere outside of that visualization. And now we can create a new one. If we had just kept it like this, where we were still interacting with this visualization and we clicked on a different one, it would have then changed our visualization completely, which we don't want. So let's hit Control Z, click out of it, and now we can create a new one. Let's go right over here to this 100% stacked column chart. I'm gonna click on it, drag it over here and make it much larger. And we're gonna come right over here to this customer information and we're gonna click on customer. And then we're gonna go up to unit sold and click on unit sold. And we wanna break these out. And so basically what this is doing is it's breaking it out by each of these shops. And we can see the total of what they're buying, the units sold. But we wanna see exactly what products make up this percentage or this 100%. So we're gonna go right over here to product name. We're gonna drag that down to the legend. And as you can see, now we have each of these products and each of the products is up here. So this backpack, we can see the backpack right here, the backpack right here and right here, and we can see which customer is buying what percentage of their purchases. So for this prep for anything prepping store, they have a very large percentage, 40% is duct tape. So they're buying a lot of duct tape. So really quickly, we're able to see what clients are purchasing or which clients are purchasing what products the most. So just like this Alex Analyst Apocalypse preppers, they're buying a lot of water purifiers. We like drinking clean water. Um, you know, that's just what my audience likes. And so, you know, we can easily get a quick glance of that. Again, we're going to go in here. I tend to like putting these data labels on here. That's just what I preference. So, you know, something like this. It looks nice. It looks clean. Um, we can always go back and change these names, um, which we'll do for this one. So we're going to go over here, we'll go to title. We'll go down to the text and we'll do customer customer purchase, oh geez, breakdown. Pretend I'm really good at spelling. And we're gonna do it just like that. We'll get out of there. So now we have customer purchase breakdown and that looks really nice. It's a good, uh, a good visualization and 
We're going to bring that right over here. We're going to have a lot on the screen, so I may have to uh, make them smaller or larger to fit everything. All right, so let's go on to our next one. Another really common visualization is this one right here, which is the line chart. And the line chart is great, especially when you're using things like dates. I have found this one to be the best and a lot of people use this as well. So we're gonna go right over here and click on date purchased and then units sold. And on the X axis, you can see it's broken up by year, quarter, month, and day. So we don't wanna do it that high level. We only have three months of data in here. So we're gonna get rid of the year, we're gonna get rid of the quarter, and then we at least have this. And let's break it out, because right now we're looking at all of the units sold. So we're gonna drag the product name right down here to the legend, and now it breaks it out by the actual product. And for each month in January, February, or March, you can follow these products and see how they did in each of those months. And if we wanted to, we can come right over here to the filter on the product name, and we could filter it by maybe the top three. So let's do multi-tool survival knife, the nylon rope, and the duct tape and we can have it just like this and you know you can do those for any product that you want but again we just want to do it for those three just for an example and that really doesn't give us a ton of information we could even go down to the day and you know it might give us a little bit more information and so we'll keep it like that and we can go over here we'll change the name as well we're not going to do this for all of them again we're just looking at the different types of visualizations i think are really good to know but we'll change this one as well to products purchased by date. And we'll keep it just like that. Again, nothing fancy. We're just trying to look at a bunch of different stuff. So let's put this over here or down here. Now let's click out of there. And there are other ones in here um, that are definitely useful and you absolutely can use. Um, like this one is a stacked bar chart. This one is a stacked column chart. It's basically the same thing, just a different orientation. We went to here, just a different orientation. It's the same thing, um, just like this clustered bar chart, clustered column chart, it's just its orientation, either horizontal or vertical. Then we have things like an area chart, a stacked area chart, not really things that I've used too much in previous positions. One that I have used though is a line and clustered column chart. So it kind of combines a few of these with you know, you have these bar charts as well as line charts into one visualization. So let's look at this one because this is one that I have used several times in my actual job. So for our X axis, we'll use the product name. Then we'll look at something like the price. And so let's make this a lot larger so we can actually see it. So now we have the price and now we can look at something like the production cost and that can be our line Y axis. So now we're looking at the price of it, how much someone is actually paying for it. And then we're looking at how much it's costing us to actually produce that product. And so really quickly at a glance, you can kind of see that it's around the halfway to two thirds point on most of these. You can see that the production cost is always lower than the actual price because of course we're out here to make a profit on these products. So let's minimize this one. We're gonna put this one right down here. Let's make it even smaller. Let's click out of that. And the next one that we're gonna take a look at is a scatter chart. So let's click on that and make it much larger. Oops, there we go. So let's use the price and the production cost again. And so our X axis is the price, our Y axis is the production cost. But now we need to fill in this values right here. So let's go over here and click on the product name and drag that into values. And so now we have our values, we just don't know what they are, but we can see it. So let's drag this down to legend as well. And it breaks it out and we kind of have this scatter plot. And you know, for this fake data that we're using, it doesn't really show a lot. Uh, but if you're using real data, you can definitely find outliers and trends and patterns using this type of visualization. Let's go ahead and make that one small as well. Drag it right down into the corner. Now let's go right over here and we have the, the dreaded pie charts. Um, and donut chart. Now look, I think it's kind of a joke in the data analyst community about pie charts and donut charts, but at the same time, people use them and they request them. And so sometimes you're going to use it whether you like it or not. So let's click on the donut chart and let's make this one a lot larger. And let's go over here and let's click on state. And we're also gonna click on total purchased. 
and that's really all you have to do. These ones are pretty straightforward. You can change a few different things, like where these labels are. If you want them inside, you can also do that, and that would look totally fine. Um, again, I'm just not a super huge fan, but you will get this one requested. People like this and want to see it. And the reason a lot of analysts don't like using this is because when you start glancing at these, it's really hard to tell the difference between these sizes. If you look at something like this, you can easily see that this is larger. Like if you're looking at this one, the multi-tool survival knife is obviously the longest and it gets shorter, 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 shorter. But when you start getting in here, it's really hard to approximate the size. I would not be able to tell the difference between this 5.63, 5.78, 7.72. I would not be able to tell really the difference between these or, or kind of the, the difference between them very easily. That's why a lot of people don't want to use them in general. So again, I want to show you this one because I think it's worth noting and worth knowing how to use, but I don't really push people towards this because I don't think it's the best visualization available most of the time. All right, the next two are super easy, but are used all the time, uh, maybe more than some of these even, but they're just so easy to use, so I kind of saved them for last. This one is the card, and all the card is is it displays one number or multiple numbers if you want to use a multi-row card, but we'll just look at the card for now. All we're going to look at is the total purchased, and it's just going to display it just like this, and you can make it as large or as small as you'd like, and normally it goes on like the top, and you'll put a card here, a card here, um, just for example, kind of show you how this might look. So it looks something like this, right? And at the top, it'll have different, usually high overarching information. And this is super common to see, and I'm sure if you've looked at other people's visualizations, you'll see something like this. This is usually totals or averages or something like that in here where it's super easy to look at. So like right here, this is total purchased and we can go in and look at the minimum. And then we can go over here and this one can be account. And so it gives us a lot of information just at a really quick glance. And then we have all of our more in-depth, colorful visualizations that kind of have more information than just a single piece like the card does. And then the very last one that I'm going to show you is this one right here, which is the table. And this one is obviously extremely popular. It's like in a little Excel table. And we can go in here and we can get the customer wherever that is. And then we'll also get the unit sold. And this is what it looks like. And it's super easy and oftentimes you'll have it like on the side as well uh, and all the other visualizations over here. And so, you know, if we're going to take all these visualizations and pretend they were like a real thing, you know, there's a lot in here, but we'll just kind of really quickly do this. Um, you know, we might have something like this and we'll make this larger and we'll make this wider. And, you know, we have a lot of information just in here. And this is not a project, so don't go put this on your portfolio. I'm just through a ton of random visualizations on, you know, this dashboard. But you can already see a lot of these you most likely have seen in other people's work and other people's visualizations on LinkedIn or on YouTube. These are very common, very, very popular. And again, we did not go through all of the ones over here. There are maps that you can use, but I haven't used maps ever in my job. There are things like gauges and decomposition trees and waterfall charts and uh, tree maps and all these different things. But I really have never used those in my actual job. And I don't see them a lot in other people's work either. Otherwise, I would be telling you to learn these and use these. But again, try them out. See which ones you like. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and go check out all the other Power BI tutorial videos that I have on my channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.